This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hey, dog lovers. Welcome to Have Dog Will Travel. I'm Christy Vaughn. And I'm Josh Henry. And it's that time of year. Whatever it is you celebrate, whether it's Christmas or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or Festivus. <laughs> right? Festivus is a yeah. thing? Right? Sure. Um, I think so. Whatever it is, it's celebrated <laughs> this time of year. So merry, happy, whatever it is you uh, you celebrate. Yes. And that actually brings us to the reason behind today's episode, Home for the Holidays. We are prepping for a pretty epic road trip. Not because we're going across the country or anything. No, I wish. We're actually <laughs> driving to Florida from Georgia with four dogs. Yeah. Uh, two large dogs, two small dogs. I mean, if you've seen our social media, and please follow us on social media, <laughs> then you've seen you've seen the gang. Um, and the two small ones are are French bulldogs, which require a lot of care and they're and high maintenance. maintenance. Yeah, they're yeah. high maintenance animals. And and one of them's a senior dog, Sadie, one of the larger dogs. So we have quite the gang we're going to be traveling with, and this is a first. We've never done this before, and we decided to do it just because it was kind of most convenient and we're going to visit my family and I called my mom up and I said hey mom we're gonna come down for Christmas and guess what we're bringing all the dogs and there was this long silence (laughs) and now my my parents are are dog people and they don't currently have any animals but there was just the silence, and I thought... But yeah, they are dog people, and they love our dogs. Yeah, and they love our dogs. But we, I don't think we've ever had all of them there at once. And there, were, there was this long silence, and I was like, hello? And my mom says, well, I just cleaned my carpets. <laughs> so, not that our dogs have accidents, right? No, but they no, shed never. plenty Yeah, of they hair. shed. They, they all do their share of shedding, especially this that's time easy, of year. That's easily vacuumed or whatever. Sure, so. yeah. But then she was like, okay, that's fine. Yeah, bring everybody. But we've never done this before, so we thought it would be nice to compile some tips. We have well, a countdown. Well, before we get to that, I want to piggyback on that real quick and then also say that after we do that, we're going to go spend New Year's Eve oh, with, right. some, uh, with some other friends of ours in Florida. They're actually... Jeremy and Christina from episode uh, two, if you if you have listened to that. And so we're going to go hang out with them. And I uh, I asked Jeremy, I was like, hey, man, uh, would you like to do New Year's Eve together this year? Because we meant to do it last year because of some circumstances it didn't work out. You know, so let's take a mulligan on last year and let's do New Year's Eve together. He's like, yeah, man, that'd be great. Uh, and they're getting back from this epic trip abroad. and um, But, you know, they, uh, you know, wanted to, wanted to get together with us. And so I said, all right, cool. One thing, though. We would have to bring all of the dogs. And we were texting, so I don't know, you know, his immediate reaction. But uh, there was kind of a, a tentative response of, are you sure that's the only option? <laughs> <laughs> and again, they, they, they've only met Stella, um, but they love the dogs. And, uh, but they had just come off like a month of dog sitting some friends' dogs. They, they're definitely dog people, but they don't have their own. And so they were a little a little dog weary, and they were having a lot of, um, well, I think, like allergic reactions to the tremendous amounts of dogs here. These other dogs had, had uh, yeah. So we're gonna need to house, do some so. fermenting before we go visit them. Lots of fermenting. Yeah. So yeah. So we've 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 prepped all the necessary parties. Yeah. And, they, and that uh, that's actually why we wanted to put together a countdown: the top ten tips for traveling home for the holidays since many of you may be doing the same. Now, if you're just traveling with one dog, much easier than four. (laughs) We're pretty brave, and we have a sedan. It's not like we have some gigantic SUV, so we're just going to pile them in the back seat of the Honda Accord and hope for the best. But we have done some research, and we've we've, uh, compiled some tips for you all that we wanted to share, and this is just based off of our own experiences And some of these we've mentioned in previous episodes, but we've also sprinkled in some new tips, so make sure you pay attention. So Josh, you want to start us off with number 10? I will. Number 10, make sure you prep for the travel portion of your trip. Now that means making a list of what you need to bring, pack a bag for your dogs, 
you know, so just the same as you would do for yourself. You know, if you need your medication and you need your toothbrush and all that, make sure that whatever is a part of your dog's day today, then you, you have that as well as any kind of, um, emergency or unforeseen stuff you know like i have a i have kind of a go bag for stella like a backpack that's constantly full of things for her <laughs> it's her prepper bag yeah <laughs> it's, it's her, it's her uh, we have to get the hell out of town bag. It's, it's ready to go but um well, there's another word for that what do they call it not a prepper bag but also a um bug out like it's a bug yeah out it's kit. your bug out bag. yeah but anyway um you know, so all of their day-to-day stuff, make sure you prep all that and, and you have everything you need. And then, you know, do your research. Make sure that you check in wherever it is you're going, make sure it's a dog-friendly place. So obviously, even if you're going to visit family, they might not have dogs and they might like your dogs, but that doesn't mean their house is ready for the dogs. So that could mean, you know, you make sure you bring like a doggy gate or a crate so that if you need to leave them by themselves or whatever, then, you know, there's a place for them to be and so on. So do your research and plan ahead. Also, if you're traveling to a hotel or you're stopping at a hotel along the way or you'll be staying at one for several days, just make sure you do your research ahead of time. A lot of hotels are dog friendly these days, but we've mentioned it before on here that some of them aren't always up front with their pet fees. Right. So if you don't see anything on their website, make sure you call ahead because sometimes it's a hidden fee that you find out about when you check in. <laughs> So number nine is make sure you prep your vehicle. So if you will be driving, you want to make sure your dogs are safe and secure just like you are. So we recommend putting your dog or dogs in the back seat with a hammock. And we've talked about it before. You can purchase it on Amazon. There's a couple of different varieties of it. But what's really cool is that it clips into your back seat and it pretty much fits any standard back seat. And it has a place for these seat belts. And I think it comes with two i Most believe of them come with two of the and you can belt. purchase extras and the seat belt just literally like fits in to their harness so we recommend using a harness not a collar um, but it clips in and that way if you stop quickly it will hold them in place but it won't yank on their neck so it's just a good way to keep them secure and maybe not like you know, fighting or playing the whole time in the back seat. It kind of keeps everyone to themselves. Um, So we definitely recommend doing that too. And if you need to set it up ahead of time, if you don't have one already in place, set it up ahead of time and maybe do like a test drive down to the dog park before you go on your long trip. Right. And remember with the harness and uh, seatbelt scenario, that's not just a disaster scenario. Like if you have a car accident, obviously it's great for that. But if you stop to get gas or whatever and you want to let your dog out, if you have the kind of dog that likes to jump out immediately or they see another dog or they see a cat and they want to go after it, you know, they'll be held in check until you can get the their leash on them and then you let them out of the car. So that can also prevent other problems from happening as well. And that brings us to number eight. Bring something from home that gives them comfort like their bed or a favorite toy. Uh, even just going around town, regular driving around stuff. I have a bed um, inside the hammock in the back seat for Stella. And so that, you know, it used to be in her crate when she was being crated all the time. And so she's very familiar with it. It has her smell on it. It makes her nice and comfortable. Also, they can get bored in the back. You know, they might nap a lot, but um, especially if they're a chewer like a pit bull breed, then they need something that that kind of occupy their mind. This brings us to number seven. Bring plenty of food and treats. This is so important. So if your dog is on a regular diet, you don't want to take them off of it for any reason. Uh, even when you're traveling, especially when you're traveling, because they could already maybe get some, you know, ups- upset stomach just from being nervous or from the car. So you definitely don't want to change anything up. So make sure you plan ahead and you calculate, you might have to do a little bit of math and calculate how much food you need. So we're going to have to do a lot of planning and then put it into a container to take with us with four dogs being gone for about a week. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of food. So think a about big that. big bag of food in the truck. Yeah, we're going to have to figure that out soon. Uh, but calculate how much they eat every day and then also bring extra just in case. Because what if you get stuck there? Um, I don't wish that on anyone, but if you're traveling somewhere where there might be some weather coming in and you get stuck at a relative's house, you want to make sure you have extra food, and also medicine. So if your dog is on any type of medicine, um, Remy just had a procedure done and he's on antibiotics for a while now. 
and want to make sure we have his medication with us. Um, he also has steroids for just in case he has a breathing episode. Want to make sure we have that just in case. So make sure you think about all of those things. So any type of regular food or treats, um, make sure you bring plenty of water because you're going to be in the car probably for a little bit. And, you know, we're going to be for a few hours in the car. Want to make sure we have enough water for ourselves and also for the dogs and a way to give them that water. So whether it's one of those water bottles um, that has the little dish that pops out or a collapsible bowl, make sure you give them plenty of water throughout. So if you're in the car for five, six hours and they don't have water the whole time, I mean, that's a whole day has gone by without them having any water. They might get dehydrated and just the stress of travel will make that even worse. Yeah, and we're very fortunate that traveling during the winter time in the south is a really good time to travel with your pets because, yeah, it's chilly, but it's not, you know, we don't get like a lot of uh, snowstorms here or, you know, severe ice. It's happened and it's a disaster when it does. We all know, but it's a pretty good time to travel with your pets, especially when you're going into somewhere even warmer like Florida. But if you're not in that situation, then again, Think about where you're going, what the weather is going to be like, and, you know, what you might need in the, in the event of whatever. Number six, if your dog tends to get anxiety or doesn't really do that well in the car, it's great to bring CBD treats or any kind of prescriptions they might have for anxiety. Uh, not all dogs love being in the car. It makes them nervous, can make them kind of uneasy, especially if you don't take them on trips a lot. So we give uh, a couple of our dogs CBD treats for their joints and things like that, but it also has a nice calming effect and that might help them kind of relax and again that's tied into the stuff with the bed and the toy and all that i think the bed and the toy stuff is a given for almost any dog but again if your dog has tends to have anxiety about travel in the car cbd treats or whatever would be a good uh there's also was it is it box or bachman's the the liquid stuff there's a thing i have i have to i have to look it up and maybe i'll post about it later but i don't i i can't personally say i've seen a tremendous effect on stella but there's other very natural things out there that help with your dog's hyperactivity or anxiety. Calming them, yeah. yeah also, lavender effect. oil. There's some diffusers. I don't know how that would work in the car necessarily. Maybe. Um, but there's at-home things you can do with diffusers, for especially for dogs. You have to be careful well, there's, with there's oils. Car, there's car diffusers. True. Yeah, you could do that. Just be careful with um, essential oils. Some are toxic to dogs, but I know that there are some like lavender that have a calming effect on them. Because I remember when Remy was a puppy, we got him this toy that had a, a lavender scent to it. And you would put it in the crate to calm them. And that worked a little bit. But they also have diffusers you can put, you know, by their beds and where they sleep. So look into that as but well. That being said, also keep in mind that you're, you know, if it's cold, your windows are going to be up. Your dog's sense of smell is anywhere True. between ten to 100,000 times that of yours. So if you're smelling a strong lavender scent or any scent in your car... It's overwhelming for your dog. That's so true. you got to find the right balance. A little can go a long way. Very true. I just realized that number five should have probably been number six because it segues nicely from our talk about bringing water. Make sure you take plenty of bathroom breaks. <laughs> if you have to go to the bathroom, your dog probably has to go as well. So that's a good rule of thumb is if you have to stop and use the restroom, it's a great time to get your dog out, stretch their legs, and also potty. Yeah, I'm also noticing, um, look at the list here, that we've got number five twice. <laughs> so, <laughs> Oops. So good job, Christy. Um, that's me. That's all right. That's all right. Okay, uh, so we have two fives. So we got a top of, cool. we got an 11 uh, item checklist, act, actually. Um, well, we kind of already mentioned what you already, you jumped ahead and mentioned about the weather appropriate stuff. That's true. Kind yeah. of. So it's still, but there was a, a, a nice little caveat to that. Yes. That is the other number five, which is, <laughs> you know, planning for weather. So. For example, let's say you're going somewhere that there's going to be snow or even you're going somewhere that's going to be really hot and the pavement's hot. Bring booties for your dog so that their little paws are kept safe from the extreme elements. Excellent advice. And also, you know, you know, like all of our dogs are short hairs. So if we were in a situation where it's going to be really cold, then, you know, we have jackets, sweaters. Oh, we have whatever. sweaters. <laughs> oh, we have. <laughs> we have. We have dog accessories clothes galore. and costumes. We were just talking today about our, our dog costume closet is pretty extensive. And I'm not ashamed of that at all. <laughs> all right. Number four. Wait, Make... um, did you say with, the, with oh. the bathroom breaks, did you add pee yeah. pads? Did oh, no, that? I didn't. Sorry. Back to number 
the first number five. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, the, yeah, bathroom breaks along the way. But once you get there, make sure, obviously, your dog is potty trained. If you just got a new puppy, I would hesitate to take them to someone's house unless you are fully prepared with pee pads and they are willing to use them and that the the host knows that this is happening because like my mom said she just cleaned her carpet so you don't know if somebody is weird about dog accidents so i would just say make sure your dog's potty trained or you bring pee pads if you have a dog that's used to going on them make sure you have plenty of them just to be respectful of the person's house all right now on to number four This one's super important too, tags and medical records. Make sure if you have a cut, like you have several colors, like we have harnesses and colors for like different situations, but we keep our tags on one specific one so you don't have to change them out. Make sure you have your current tags with you. It's a good idea to bring your... For like a rabies and things like that. Yes. And just contact info. Because like what if you're at, you know, a gas station and... God forbid your dog runs out and someone has to grab them real quickly and they don't, you know, they don't know their name and they need to look up your phone number on their tag or whatever. I I don't know. I don't even want to think about a situation like that. But it's a good idea to have their name, phone number on on the tags, and then also their up-to-date rabies tag. Um, Because you're going someplace else, you might be going into a public place or a dog park where you have to show proof. Um, it's a good idea to have medical records, so maybe make a copy before you leave and put the medical records into a folder. Oh, also, it's 2019, so there's no real good reason you shouldn't have all your dog's medical records scanned or take pictures of them yes. if, that's, if scanning is difficult for you, and put them on your iCloud or your Dropbox or your Google Drive or whatever, so they're constantly available and on the cloud for whenever you might need them. And then you don't have to worry about lugging papers around and things like that. True. Or some vets, like mine give out these handy dandy ID cards Mm -hmm. that are pretty cool. It has the dog's picture. It's like a driver's license for your dog. So you can just take that with you and they update it every time your dog gets new shots. Um, And then another big one that goes along with the same one, number four, um, make sure you locate the nearest vet wherever you're going and maybe along the way just in case you have some sort of emergency situation. So for example, um, I knew someone who was traveling with their dog and they got out to let them pee and the dog got stung by a bee and had a horrible reaction. So what do you do in that situation? You could be in the middle of nowhere and not know where the vet is. So obviously with our phones these days, it's pretty easy to look up the nearest vet. But just make sure, you know, like, what if you don't have self-service? You well, know, even just... for ourselves, God forbid, you know, like, but Remington has, you know, breathing problems and stuff at times. If he starts having an episode or something mm-hmm. and is having a, a breathing attack or whatever, then we wouldn't need to know where to go. Right, right. So especially if you're going to be staying somewhere for a week or so, just make sure you know where the nearest vet and emergency vet is just in case. Especially if you're staying with someone who doesn't have pets, you know, they may not know. So just look that up ahead of time. Ooh, I, ooh, I just thought of one that's not on the list. Okay. Um, so I'm going to give you a little bit of backstory. It, we don't always let the dogs on the bed. Um, every now and then, if, if they're feeling, you know, sickish or whatever, or we're feeling sickish and they need cuddles or we need cuddles or whatever, you know, once in a while they're allowed up on the bed, but it's not a full-time thing. Anyway, that being said, we had just gotten back from a trip and Stella was with us and so we hadn't seen her in a while. And she, of course she missed us. So we, were, we let her on the bed. And just sort of out of the blue, for no apparent reason, nothing scared her, nothing weird happened, she just fully released her anal glands right (laughs) on our comforter. (laughs) And Uh, if you don't know that smell, it is horrid. So it might be a good idea if it's, you know, an option for you to take your dogs to your vet and have their anal glands excised before you go. Excised? Is that the right thing? No, word? it's expressed. That's what, I always screw it up. I don't know why. Like exorcism? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, you got to get the evil out. <laughs> exorcism. Okay. No, but expressed or whatever. Get the, take them to the vet, get the anal glands in. That way that you don't have to worry about that happening in your back seat while you're driving. Oh, gosh. That would be really bad. Oh, it's, oh now it's, I'm thinking that. Yeah, oh, it's happened. That yeah. Might that would be a us. good, good tip. Also... Ugh. Um, just be real sure you don't feed them anything outside of the normal diet yes. before the trip or you're going to have a very gassy trip to wherever oh, you're yes. going. Oh, yes. You're going to ride the whole way with the windows down. Yes. So now we've got 12 items. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's next? Ah, uh, number three. Prep your family. If you're going to see family or whomever that, you know, 
not to give your dogs holiday treats, especially if they don't, or holiday food in general. People or, food. You know, people food. Yeah, sorry. People food. Um, they might not, if they don't have dogs especially, they might not know. Some people have dogs and still don't know that these things. I mean, I was at a, a friend's place the other night, and we were having snacks. We're watching football. And my buddy, um, and the, my friends have a couple dogs. And my buddy drops a grape. And the dog was right there. And he was like, oh, hey, get it. And we were like, no, no, don't <laughs> no. get it. Don't get it. And luckily the dog knew that I was like, I don't want to fuck with that. So it didn't mess with it. But, um, you know, he, and he's not a dog owner. So some people don't necessarily know. They might feed your dog something full of onions or God knows what. Chocolate. So, yeah, I mean, I think chocolate. everybody pretty much knows chocolate's bad, right. but you never know. So right. make sure you prep them, especially with holiday food all over the place. Make sure it's not within reach. If you have a counter surfer like my Sadie, <laughs> uh, just, you know, kind of prep everyone that if you know, they turn their backs, then one something your, may be missing. Oh, yeah. One for your dog's sake. Yeah. just Yeah. That's a good note, too, I think. It's just not just them not giving food, but not yes. leaving food that's accessible. Yes. But one, not just for your dog's sake, but again, as we said in the previous note, for yours. Because if it's like the day before you've got to head back. Well, now you've got a gassy, maybe throwing up, maybe diarrhea-ridden yeah, dog on your five, six-hour road trip home. Ugh, terrible. <laughs> All right, we're at number two. Where will you keep your dog if you leave the house while you're visiting family or friends? Where will your dog stay? So think about that because remember, you're not at home. So they're not going to be as comfortable and they may not have all of their stuff there. There may not be a designated room for them. So just make sure you think ahead. Will you need a crate? Will you need a baby gate? Make sure you bring it with you or make sure the person you're visiting has one available and have them think about where you should set up for your dog. So if, you know, also if they don't have a fenced in yard, like my parents don't have a fenced in yard. So we have to think about that too. So As we're used to research, just, you know, know yeah, just, you know, make sure you know ahead of time. So there's no surprises, but you know, at home we just let our dogs out into the yard and it's fenced and there's no problem, but we're going to have to actually put them on leashes and, and walk them. So that's something different. Not that we don't walk our dogs, but we're, every time they go out, we're going to have to put them on leashes because it's not fenced in and secured. So think about that. So inside and outside, what is the environment like? Just make sure you aren't surprised with anything. So if they need a timeout, which they probably will, if you're having family over or friends over, they might get a little overwhelmed and they might need a timeout or the people might need a timeout because your dog's all up in their business. So just make sure you think about that. Yep. Good note. And that brings us to number one. <laughs> have a good time. And how do you have a good time and get to relax and enjoy yourself by doing your prep work, by making sure you've got everything you need, by packing for your dog as thoroughly as you pack for yourself because they are a family member and they do have needs. And so if you go through this list and you make sure you're, you're totally prepared, then that's taking a weight off your shoulders and you can really enjoy the holidays with your family. Well, I mean. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? Also, as, at, least, at least you won't be able to not enjoy it because of the dog. Well, and you know what? On the flip side, your dog could be a good excuse to kind of dip out a little bit early or go right. hang with your dog in the other room if your weird uncle's yeah. being too weird. Right, or the that's, <laughs> that's dark. <laughs> <laughs> or if the political debates get, you know, cranked up and you're like, I got to get the F out of here. Yeah, it could lighten the mood a little bit, you know, just invite your dog over and it kind of ultimately it will lighten the mood, I think. Yeah. Also, so Christy, I realized... That we did our first podcast in December of last year. So we did. So happy an one year anniversary to have Dog World Travel. Anniversary episode. You got a, a two from one here. <laughs> <laughs> so we hope that's very helpful to everybody. Um, remember, if you if you have something else that you feel like we missed or that you have learned from your own previous experience. Please feel free to get in touch with us on social media and let us know. Just hit us up and say, oh, yeah, I had this experience and I learned this lesson or whatever. Uh, our website is HaveDogWillTravelPodcast.com. And, of course, Instagram and Facebook. And Twitter. no, Twitter's different. Twitter Instagram and Facebook right. are at Have Dog Will Travel Podcast, And I think Twitter is HDWT Podcast. Yes. Right. That's correct. So, uh, yeah, get in touch with us there and let us know what insight you've got. Uh, we would absolutely love to hear from you. And otherwise, we wish you a merry, happy Whatever. Whatever, yeah, whatever it is you celebrate. So we hope that was helpful and you enjoyed this episode. And remember, if you want to take your dog on a trip, but you're worried it could all unravel. Just listen to us. Have dog will travel. 
Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.